हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल इन द डिजिटल एज वी आर कंज्यूमिंग सो मच कंटेंट विद पॉडकास्ट मूवीज यूट्यूब वीडियोस रीडिंग बुक्स आर्टिकल्स एंड फॉर मी दिस लेड टू दिस फीलिंग ऑफ बीइंग ओवरवेल्म्ड I wanted to remember everything that I consumed or at least the key highlights and I could have written them down but I don't always carry a journal with me sometimes I was out on a walk sometimes I was working out and I was like there has to be a better way to do this I wanted to make sure that whenever I consume something I can also easily retrieve it back and in this process I discovered Diego Fortes's book Building a Second Brain and decided to give it a shot now you may be wondering what is a second brain Think of it as a system for capturing, organizing and accessing all the information and tasks in your life. It's called a second brain because it helps you offload the mental burden of trying to remember everything in your mind, allowing you to focus on more important tasks. This basically means that your brain is not very good at storing information. It's actually really bad at it, but it's good at being creative. And by offloading the tension of remembering every little detail when working on a project, it allows you to think for yourself. On average, nowadays you are consuming 34 gigabytes of data every single day. To put into perspective, that's equivalent of reading 174 full newspapers. You can always write things down, but in the digital age, we don't have to solely rely on analog systems we should use digital tools to capture and organize the information that we are consuming every day to enable us to do a better job at work to create content or express our thoughts in any fashion of our choosing so without wasting too much of your time let's get started the first step in building a second brain is to understand what am i consuming every day So for the purpose of this video when I made my list I divided them into two sections text based capture and then for audio photos and videos it's because I consume a lot of text and the system around it is very similar while it is different for audio video and photos in text I consume articles when reading on my phone or on the web page or on twitter or I'm reading books whenever I like an article but I don't have the time to read it I save it on a read it later app called insta paper and I've integrated insta paper to readwise which is integrated to notion acting as a database of storing the information for me so if i'm on the go reading an article while walking or in the washroom i can just highlight it save that information via readwise to notion but i do most of my reading sitting on the computer doing all my reading highlighting stuff on the web whenever i'm researching and for that i found a very good chrome extension called glass it allows you to highlight anything on the web on almost every web page and when you start highlighting this information it allows you to tag that see those highlights creating a visual map for you of all the information that you have gathered while researching or reading online and then let's say you're working on a project you've highlighted a bunch of stuff then you can just go here use that tag copy highlights move it onto a note taking app of your choosing it could be notion it could be mem and then you can just paste it there and it comes alongside the metadata information for that specific article which you can use for source when you are creating something or you are presenting something and now this year one good thing that i did for myself was start reading books i read a ton of books this year and that's all thanks to this little toy called kindle the only reason i bought kindle so that i could integrate it with readwise as well so if i'm reading something and i found something interesting i just highlight it and then it saves it on notion the excerpt for that specific section that i highlighted So now I can just go back retrieve it see all the information on the fly. And now lastly this year I started using Twitter and one of the things that I like a lot about Twitter is people share a lot of good information. And sometimes those gems are amazing and you can take screenshots save them try to figure it out but it very quickly becomes difficult to keep track of. Readwise also comes with this nifty little feature of you just doing at readwise save on any tweet and then it saves it on that same database on Notion. all of these text capturing tool working seamlessly together once you have set them up allows you to build information databases from all these three sections that you are consuming every day that any time you see any text based thing that you want to save it automatically does it for you i think it's pretty fabulous moving on to the next section now for audio i listen to a ton of podcasts i believe it's the future of us consuming information and learning new things but the biggest complaint that i always had with podcasting softwares was if i found something profound while i'm listening to somebody i had no ability to save that specific snip or that specific section and this was frustrating i was like i can't just go back and remember timestamps i used to record them but that's painful 
record it every single time. For that, another app comes in. It's called Snipe. I had researched a ton of podcasting apps that allow me to save specific sections if I like something yeah. interesting. But there was nothing out there like this, which I think is probably the best podcasting app out there. Whenever you see a section that you feel you like, you can just create a Snipe by a tap of a button and it saves that information on Notion, which is acting as your database. And then it generates key highlights alongside the transcript of the section that you saved or sniped. I'm very surprised that other apps are not doing this. Amazon, please add this feature in Audible. Stop gatekeeping knowledge. Now let's come to the place where I spend the most time and waste the most time. I primarily watch YouTube for a lot of the information that I'm consuming. YouTube has a lot of great features on itself pre-built in the tool alongside the save later videos. But I found it distracting to have the feed and save later side by side. I would just start watching new videos and I felt that was counterproductive to why I was saving them on the first place. So for that, I started to use this app called Play Save Later, which works seamlessly on all devices that I use. And you can add tags and you can create folders. This allows you to save the videos that you really like in a structured manner. There are other Chrome extensions like Pocket Tube that you can use, but I have not used and explored them as much. For me, currently, this Play app has been working great. But if you guys have a better recommendation for saving YouTube videos, I'm happy to learn. And now for photos, it's basically Google Photos if you're an Android person or Photos if you're an iPhone person. I think these two apps are pretty good at what they're supposed to do. It's just save photos, create folders, create albums, share photos and share albums. I still think there are a lot more features in the Google Photos app, but I do like the aesthetics of the Photos app a little more than the Google Photos. It really is a trade-off between what you want. You want more features or you want more aesthetics. I hope you found all the information that I just shared with you useful. Now I want to just give you guys some wisdom here. Do not capture everything. In the beginning, when you start capturing, ask yourself questions like, is it inspiring? Is it surprising? Is this useful for me? Am I learning something here? And it might seem a little bit of a work when you are doing it in the beginning, but then as you keep on doing this, you will stop capturing everything, but start capturing the useful things which you think are going to benefit you down the line. And with that, I will end the CO, the capture and organize section of the code framework, and then talk about the distillation section, which for me is my weekly review process. I look at everything that is pending in terms of my tasks, look at all the notes that I've created this week. I look at all the podcasts that I've saved. I look at any emails that I have not responded, look at the screenshots, look at the downloads folder, clean everything up so I don't accumulate all the capture information that I've stored. Because you can just keep on capturing. If you don't distill them, you don't organize them, weed out the unuseful part with the useful part, then you're just creating a problem on top of a new solution. It's counterproductive. So you must incorporate a weekly review process to just go over all the information that you've captured and then organize them into the right places that you feel like, and then just weed out the unuseful stuff that you've captured this week. Maybe you don't need that based on any project that you're currently doing or archiving the information once you have completed a project. And lastly, in the code framework, we have Express. Now, Express could mean a lot of the things depending upon your current situation. If you're a full-time content creator, it's very easy to describe. You just have to express your thoughts, create the content with the stuff that you're consuming. But if you're working full-time and not creating content in a creative space, it is still useful for you to express your thoughts at work in a fashion that other people are not doing. There are tons of examples. Jeff Bezos, Kobe Brown, Taylor Swift. They all kept journals or some system to capture their thoughts and then express them in their field of expertise. So it is not unique to just creators. The way of us expressing really just depends on who we are and what we choose to express. Now, as you start building these systems and these activities, you'll slowly start to see the efficiency in your work. And over time, you'll be working at a 10x pace than your coworker. And people would be surprised at how are you able to get so much more done in the same amount of time that both of you. I hope you found all of this information useful and you start out incorporating these systems in your day-to-day -day routine. Don't use your brain to store information, use computers, use your brain creatively to express your thoughts. See you next week.